After the break, when our dreamy doctor, Ian Wallace, will be taking your calls in our phone. It's a scene in a minute. Hello there and welcome back and uh, with me again is dream interpreter Ian Wallace. We have such, so many good calls actually Ian, so let's crack through them. First up we've got Lisa from Bournemouth. Hey there Lisa. Hi there. You alright? I'm fine thank you. Having a good day so far? Not too bad, a bit wet down here but apart mm. from that. <laughs> well all the snow's melted from here now so I'm a bit upset. Um, what was your dream because actually you've had a bit of a, a scary one, you're in a lift yes? Yeah I haven't had this particular dream probably for about a month thank goodness right. but um, I had it all the time, um, every night, I'd be in an elevator on the top floor and it would be somewhere that had a lot of floors and I'd be going down normally and then suddenly the lift would just go out of control as if maybe the cable was snapping and it would go down really, really fast but it would always stop just about a second before it would crash down at the bottom. And are you with other people as well, or is it just um, you on your own? There are other people in the lift, but not many, but it's always focusing on me. You can never really make out who the other people are. It's always, so, you know, focusing on myself. Right. So I would have that all the time, or I'd be running, and somebody would try and get me, and they'd never, you know, they'd be near to me, but not, they'd never actually grab me and be able to get hold of me. So the same sort of theme mm -hmm. there. Right, well, the Ian's nodding away here, Lisa, yes. so what do we reckon? Well, these are both classic anxiety dreams right. and very often you'll have a dream where your life's not in control. You feel that um, the fact that you start off in the elevator and it is in control and there's other people in there, it's normal waking life, but the elevator going down symbolises you're going down deeper into your subconscious. Right. And as you go down into your subconscious, you maybe find out more and more about yourself. Uh, you may be looking at yourself spiritually right. and all of a sudden it goes out of control. It could be a relationship you're in. Uh -huh. that something that's happening to you you're not happy with and you feel that you can't control the situation or guide it anymore. Right. But just at the last moment then your true self shines through and, and you I'm manage saved. to... <laughs> <laughs> oh Lisa! And you manage to uh, stop the situation happening. Right. And, and the one being chased as well is exactly the same thing. Uh, in a chase dream there's something unknown, there's something unknown inside yourself. Anything you have in a dream comes from yeah. inside yourself. Right. So there's something unknown there is chasing you, so there's something in your waking life which you're not dealing with. Right, okay. And um, it's always, because I'm always thinking about my career, you see, I've been trying to chase the same thing, you know, for so long now, and it's always sort of, you know, it, I have ups and downs, and it's been continuing that way for the last sort of um, ten years, I should imagine. So I think it's the anxiety is coming from that. connecting in, yeah. Oh, what, well, Lisa, thank you very, very much for your call. Sorry, because we've got so many to get through here. So, but thanks for that. That was great. Okay. Thanks. Take care. Right, Pat. Hello there, Pat from Hello. Chepstow. Hello. Pat. Hello. 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 <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yes, fine, thanks. Now, what have you been? You've been dreaming about dogs. Yes, you? I have. I've dreamt of it a couple of times. Um, I'm dreaming that I'm taking my dog for a walk through the wood. Yes. And he runs off and then. When I turn round to see where he's gone, I see a tiger Ooh. just staring at me. And does the tiger do anything? or No, it just stands there staring. Right, a dog turning into a tiger. Interesting, uh, Pat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anything to do with an animal is, again, it's your subconscious. It's the wilder part of your side. It's to do with um, your desires and your passions. So a dog's a domesticated animal. So it's the part yes. of yourself that you're familiar with and you can look after, so that part of your subconscious you're happy with. You go into the woods, which is the unknown. Now, Pat, when you go into the woods, is this at night or is it during the day? It's at night. Yeah, so it's, again, nighttime woods. It's uh, a mysterious place. You just don't know what's going on yeah, there. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Your dog runs off, so these um, desires run off, they disappear, and they come back as a tiger. Now, the tiger doesn't attack you, it just lies there in wait. So again, it's like you're, there's something in your life, some part of your subconscious, some desire you have, which you're not really owning up to or revealing to yourself. And what you can do in dreams is take them a stage further, become more active. And if you actually go and make friends with the tiger or try and stroke it, then this dream will probably go away. Right. And there's something else I've always dreamt of. Um, I had a, a sterilization um, eight years ago, and I dreamt I'm ha I've had a baby. And that keeps reoccurring all the time. Okay, this it's can quite upsetting. <laughs> yeah, 
This can be just a guilt feeling, the fact that you have had a sterilization. Right. And it can just mean that you, maybe you had a wish to have more children, but you decided consciously not to. Right. But as you resolve that feeling of guilt, which is it's not a, a big deal, that guilty feeling, you shouldn't be having it, something you decide to do, and you've made right. a decision, then that will fade away as well. Okay. Okay, okay Pat. Lovely, thanks. Thank Take you. care. Thank Bye. you. Right, let's move on. Sarah, hello. Hi. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. You've had quite a strange dream, this one, I have to be Sarah. <laughs> you, you, right, you, you dreamed that you've, you've lost an engagement ring. In a field. Yeah, in a field. And then what happens? Well, I spent ages and ages looking for it. Yeah. And I found two other engagement rings right. that weren't mine, and then eventually found mine. What on earth does that mean? <laughs> okay, the, the ring symbolises a relationship. A, a dream's a, a symbolic message. Mm. So the ring is a relationship. And dreams quite often talk in puns, so the field can mean that maybe you were playing the field, maybe you had a number of interested suitors. Sarah! Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> and the two other rings in the field may be other people who you were interested in or they were interested in you, and you spent ages looking through this and trying to make up the decision whether to follow through with this engagement or with this relationship, and eventually you decide in the dream that that's what you want to do, that you want to go with that particular relationship and leave the other two behind. Does that apply, Sarah? Um, I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, leave it at that. we'll leave it at that then, OK, shall we? Yeah. It, I think it makes sense to you, doesn't it? <laughs> Thank <Yeah>. you. Thank <laughs> you. Have a good one, however it works out. Um, very, very quickly and finally, let's go to Lanzarote, no less. Donald, hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. Do you live in Lanzarote? Oh, I do indeed. Oh. I'm working over here. Very nice too, eh? <laughs> okay, what's, what's you been dreaming about then, Ing? Um, I've had a reoccurring dream about my teeth falling out. And oh, I've know, okay. I know two other people who have it, and one had it as near as last week. Right. Well, well this is a, it's a, it's a very common dream, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's a very it, common dream. And as we've said, dreams are a symbolic language. And if you think what you do with your teeth in normal life is... It's how you deal with the outside environment, it's how you speak, it's how you assimilate your environment by eating yes. and drinking. So if your teeth are falling out in a dream, it means you feel you can't cope with what's around you. You can't articulate what you really want to say. You're not getting from life exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. yeah. So again, in the dream, if you can, sometimes if your teeth fall out, maybe you can just pick them up and put them in your pocket so they're still with you. And then I woke, in you woke up one, yeah. I woke up one morning and I actually had my mouth, my hat and my mouth grabbing my teeth. Yeah. Oh. Because that's how much so you want to they hang They started falling them. out at the top, at the back, and one fell out and then the next one, the next one, all the way around. And I woke up grabbing my teeth to make sure they were still there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's maybe because there's one thing in your life that has a knock-on effect. It's like a set of dominoes. So if, if you let one yeah. thing slip away that you can't cope with, then there'll be a whole lot of other things that will follow as well. So you just have to hang on to them. Keep those put them, teeth, Donald. Put them Donald. in my pocket. What? Put them, on, put them under the pillow for the tooth fairy. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you get lots of money then, Donald, won't you? I would, I would. More money than I'm making at the moment. I have to say that because my boss is watching. Oh, OK. <laughs> All right, get back to work. Okay. Thanks, Donald, for Goodbye your call. Bye to everybody in England. Bye-bye. And thank you, Ian, very, thank very you. much. It was great. Um, there's still loads left this afternoon. Find out more after the break with Judy Goodyear and Damon O'Neill.